Ladies and gentlemen, how you all doing? This is Con Ulrich. And I'm Ring Roo. Hello, hello, hello. And folks, we have heard the outcry. We are bringing back more of Redstorm 44. Today, we're going to give you a delicious little uh, game here on Slips Quest. This is going to be between two talented players. Rang, what is going on here and who are they bringing to the fray? On left hand side in the blue, we have Ort Fredrinka playing as Six Luftdrop Field Division. We have a Vanguard, or technically a yeah a Vanguard income. And on the right hand side in red, we have the Graham Slam playing at 84th Guard <laughs> Infantry. We have a balanced income. Uh, the matches for Red Storm we're going to be covering this week are the finals for the losers bracket of the Red Storm SD League tournament. Uh, it's the best out of three. The winner of them will go on to the true finals against Refo now. So the one thing I'm noticing over here right now is that first of all, I always like covering actually, you know, the the, the slightly less most winningest person on here. I feel like you always see such incredible games because both these guys have something to prove now. You know, they've lost once. They want to go and kind of like wipe that clean, get their honor back, all that kind of good stuff here. And frankly, looking at these two divisions, I don't know. I think we're in for a real kind of weird match, mostly because of the you know the the, the vehicle imbalance for one. Yeah, this is going to be interesting because Six Luftroth is a very good defensive division, and this is a pretty good defensive map mm -hmm. as you can just slap the anti tank guns all over the place and have a pretty good time. As the Luftroth does pretty well in open field fights. Eighty four also has a bunch of IS twos, ISU one two twos. Not as much anti-tank guns and whatnot, but they also have a lot of very heavy-duty, long-range anti-tank firepower. Both have lots of infantry, so this should be a pretty interesting matchup. It certainly should be. I mean, right now we are seeing a rather infantry-heavy breakout initially, and I actually love how we have the Stu-42 over here starting to loft some shots down. Try to take out that sniper. That sniper actually should be fired right about now, since he's fired like four or five rounds, and yet he's only he's killed two guys. What kind of sniper are you, man? No scope that. Come on. He needs to do the 360 spin before shooting him, but damn, his stew is also can't hit a broad side of a barn. It's only two guys, and he can barely even hit, yet alone suppress him. Yeah, that's true, but I mean, haven't you seen Shooter? If you want to go and start lofting around to find a sniper, unless they want you to find them, this is not like, you know, <laughs> guys running around wearing pink like you see in all the shooters. Um, we are going to see a bit of a Kampf group are moving down over here to the south, but we have also a naval for moving into the north central position for the Germans. Uh, the Rodina, on the other hand, bring in the first IS 2 up to the north central position. No, going dead center as well. How do you see this game developing? I I feel like this will be a little bit stalemate between both sides, as neither one has pre easy offensive divisions. Imagine quite a bit of artillery as both sides do have rocket artillery available to them. I feel like the southern side, as we're seeing right now, is what's going to be developing the most. Is Ort is making very good progress as Graham deployed very defensively down south, really, only covering that tree line with the flag air, not even going for the crossroads run, where it's, it's pretty much giving away a free flag air to Ort. So the question is well, Ort's going to get some very good territory. It's going to be about whether Ward can continue to push because, yeah, Forest, which Graham is defending, well, he can guard it pretty well with Warriors Guard troops. Yes, as I know, as people always ask us just to make sure we understand what's going on with these badges. Remember, Guard troops over here, 12% stress resistance. One of those things would be very, very good for us as these get closer and down and dirty. Uh, honestly, the Luftwaffe Jaegers, I, I kind of go back and forth by how much I kind of either remotely despise them or at the same time stand them. What's your thoughts? Yeah, all right. They're just they're, they're pretty much just like grenadiers essentially. You got the MG42, which is nice, but you know you don't have any of those fancy traits like with a lot of Red Storm infantry. So they're pretty mediocre. They're more just there yeah, to they're, they're spammy. They're there to hold the line. You're really relying on your fire support to really do most of the damage. And awkwardly, people like your fusiliers, uh, so your recon squads over here, which again. You don't get a lot of them, and since they tend to be very, very effective um, anti-armor positions, you don't really want to be too aggressive with them either. Unfortunately, we see one of those going down already. Uh, and I guess a couple of MG-34s will start to, I think, enter negotiations here as well. 
Yeah, and I think uh, doing a pretty good job in the negotiations, definitely convincing the slide to the air side of the argument with, uh, you know, a rather applicable use of 8mm Mauser. Yeah, I mean, the Russians are hardly able to get in a word in edgewise, and I think that's going to be kind of hard, but they start spitting out uh, arguments quite so prolifically. Um, ooh, we have an off map coming in. Okay, yep, so 76. Yeah, so expect a lot of shells. If these guys don't get out of the way in the next few seconds, it's going to be very, very bad. But actually, we also see there's a Katyusha who's aiming at the town to the north and a neighbor of her who's looking to try hit the Katyusha. So this is going to be, <laughs> going to be interesting. Um, this yep. town's going to explode, though. Yeah, and it's an incendiary rocket, so it's going to be pretty nasty stuff. Yeah, I've seen all that actually evacuate in the Luftwaffe Jaegers. But the pioneers, I mean, I guess they're flame troops, so they should be a more resistance to flames. That yeah. makes sense, you know. The, the, you know, having like a flame tank on the back gives you like 20%, you know, flame resistance because yeah. of all the flames already nearby. I think it's a five up ward save, but I might be, I might be wrong. Yeah, I think so. But it makes them more reek of water gun too. <laughs> that is true. That is certainly true. I have to watch this neighborhood for barrage. Um, my status as being a caster demands it. Um, the first rocket, second rocket kills. Ah, <laughs> uh, goddamn love. I love seeing ro artillery, especially rocket artillery, go off in this game. But that was a really good counter snipe. Yeah, I think that neighbor Rapper uh, essentially just paid himself off to sniping that one Katusha. Well, you look down to the south as well. That 76 mil off map, pinning down a couple of Luftwaffe Jaegers, but they don't actually get the front line of troops. No. Which kind of frees them up to kind of really engage these PTRDs. And as we've always talked about, these PTRDs. These guys pay for themselves so monstrously quickly, you have to take them out as soon as possible. Yeah, they're not as much of a threat here, really, for Ord, because Ord doesn't have a whole lot of light armor. He has no half tracks, he has no recon vehicles. His only armored vehicles are Stugs and Stews. So, I mean, it sucks as well, because you don't have any other light, any other vehicles to back you up, but it does mean the PTRDs are a little less of a threat. Yeah, of course, they can still mess up Stugs. We are going to see a entire wave of air strength be kind of sent in and pulled back. Several BF 109s, both a bomber. No, an ME 410 too. Ooh, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So, um, looking really quickly as the kind of furball and firefight continues to rage down here in the south and starts to even brew up a little bit further to the north, air power back and forth, shockingly enough, I might have to give the edge of this over to the Soviets, which is such a weird thing to say whenever the Luftwaffe is, is involved. Yeah, Luf the six Luftwaffe in this model, in this game, because they're not in the base game, don't really have a whole lot of air power, or really anti-air in general. It's more of a, you know, they, they kind of traded in all the anti-aircraft guns and the airplane tickets so they could get big heavy anti-tank guns. So they're a little bit, they're a little less, a little less loose trophy than you'd think. Second neighbor buffer, by the way, looking to hit that anti-air position along with the Comrati. Given the spread that's kind of endemic to these artillery strikes, I don't know if this is going to be quite as effective, but we'll kind of see as the first rounds begin to fall. All it requires is one dead hit. <laughs> <laughs> Accuracy through volume of fire. You know, and, I, and then, again, that's the whole quantity through qual or quality through quantity kind of thing. I mean, 410 going in after the IS-2, unfortunately, he's not going to realize there's still one more position in there as well. I think he's going to find out pretty dang quickly. But really be able to make the end run? Or yeah. will that anti Yeah, the anti-air is more than enough. Especially when you're flying, like, very close to it, it becomes extremely deadly. Well, don't worry, we have one more naval buffer strike looking for that 37mm palm as well, so that's going to be quite interesting to observe. Down to the south, uh, south first Strafniki squad is being brought on in. Again, folks, Strafniki penal troops doesn't mean they're really that bad. I mean, frankly, if you look at this, yes, they get stressed a little bit more easily, but the accuracy, the rate of fire, I mean, this good chunk, honestly. Yeah, and in a fight like this, where he's only really fighting against Luftwaffe Jaegers, it really just comes down to attrition and having 15 guys is much better than having like 9 or 10. Yeah, yeah. Um, I want to take a quick look to the north. SU-76s beginning to barrage the front lines in this town. They have a buffer strike going out though. Can we see 3 for 3? No, I don't think we are. Nope. A little bit short, yeah. I think that the, the, that the last uh, anti-air position was like 
I just saw what happened to Jeff. I mean, Vladimir, I'm out of here. <laughs> so you see him kind of slowly shambling back to the east there. Yeah, I don't want to be shot at by rockets. I mean, it's not 4th of July. No, no, but I can tell you it is almost as terrifying being in the middle of a 4th of July celebration put together by people from Staten Island. Um, <laughs> that is a comment and a story for another time, my friends. <laughs> the time being. T-34 to the south hasn't been a whole lot of uh, armor play, and like you said, a lot of that's because you shouldn't expect to see a whole lot from the 6th Lothwaffe. Although... We did see that. Okay, yeah, the Stu 42 did get brewed up over here in the south. Um, off map coming in just to the west on that northern town as well. We'll have to keep an eye on that in the next 30 seconds. But uh, is this developing like you anticipated or, or not so much? Yeah, I mean, the north and central side is essentially just stalemate and everything's really just going on down south here. I mean, Ort is making pretty good progress. Graham starting to bring some armored vehicles, and these T-34s should be extremely effective, as especially right now, there's not a whole lot of anti-tank on these infantry. Those two stugs can prove to be a pain in the ass, but this is still pretty good territory for T-34s to fight over its forest and light forest for them to maneuver and flank, ab flank about in. Main problem is Graham needs infantry and reconnaissance to try and spot these Luftstroff Jaegers, and probably some more proper CQC troops, and well, that's what he got with the uh, guard uh, flamethrower troops down south. Indeed. Indeed, guys. Again, so obviously, of course, flamer, pretty straightforward. Um, one thing I guess I'm trying to keep an eye on as well, so if the Commandant over here to the north, the 105 off map came down, did some decent work. In fact, we might even see a push to the east, from west to east from this town overall. And that, yeah, that BF-109 was sent in just to see if that 37 mil survived. Um, but if the Germans don't get these troops moving, they're going to get hammered by themselves by 122s. And as, as we've discovered, in this game, bigger is always better. Yeah. Yeah. The amount of armor that Graham can bring in will be quite deadly. The only nice thing is, is that the Nash one does have two kilometer range in Pack 43, while IS-2... Oh, IS-2 also has two kilometer range. Never yes, mind. Yes, Yeah. Makes it actually really deadly for Nashor one to engage because, I mean, Nashor one does have the advantage, so to speak, because it can shoot faster, but it has paper thin armor. So I think ISU just seems to even just graze the Nashor one, and it will just blow up. Well, we are going to see another naval buffer coming to the north. I'm, I'm just I, I have to watch this. Another artillery strike coming down the German positions. They did not get out of there in time, and not having. The committed eyes on still getting some depressure, you know, on down on the anti-air position. I'm actually also kind of fascinated to see the southern naval buffer aim north, mostly because he's aiming for those SU-76s. I don't know if he's really got the chutzpah to give a you know a kill, but we'll see how this yeah. works out. Yeah, it's long. That's a very long. Uh, that's going to be a pretty large dispersion on that rocket barrage. Yeah, so it shouldn't be all that accurate as we're clearly seeing. The kills are 45 mil, so not terrible. No, not terrible, but it's not exactly what you want to hear when you're an attacking general. Eh, it's not too bad. I only yeah. lost four squads getting through there. <laughs> it could have been better, but you know, you got to take what you get. Exactly. You know, break some eggs, that whole thing. Mm-hmm. IS-2 very prudently moves off the front lines. Nash as well, though, shouldn't be expecting a whole lot from them. Again, yeah. the stealth on this is still pretty shite, to put it mildly. Oh yeah, it's very bad stealth, because it is a big bloody vehicle. It doesn't help out a lot when you have no armor or rots or whatever. I think that's really, I think that's a very good reason why they try to make King Tigers and Ferdinands, because yeah, we're going to have to make a big tank nonetheless to get this bloody gun in something. Might as well slap on 200 millimeters of armor. Yeah, it's kind of understandable, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. We are seeing a 50 mil, sorry, the 45 mil, I was thinking to 50 mil. Um, 45 mil to the north, just continue to interdict this reinforcement into this town, and I think we're actually seeing it heat up. It's going to be a hot time in this town, I think, pretty soon. Soviets are getting pretty frisky, They're moving a little bit further to the west here. Yeah, I do, I do love that 45 mil position on the hill. 
is us providing really good infantry fire support. Damn, the four ten <laughs> drops its bombs and almost crashes into the T thirty four. Yeah, really yeah. trying to take one out with him. Apparently, he's been spending too much time with the Japanese allies. The whole kamikaze <laughs> thing is really kind of coming through by osmosis. <laughs> Indeed it is, but this town fight is going pretty well. I mean, Graham does have the better CQC infantry as Lufthoff doesn't have all that much great CQC troops. You got like pioneers and I believe some flamethrower guys and that's really it. They're, they're really just regular grenadiers is the bread and butter. Or lift yeah, like Lufthoff grenadiers. Or well, Jaegers, the, technically. The Katyusha is not going to help matters at all. Oh, uh Keep in mind, guys, we have a commandant over here just behind the front lines. I'll let you guys just kind of read the whole thing here again. 40 st stress resilience, 20% influence, 50% viewing range, minus 8. So the received accuracy is great. Unfortunately, I don't think it does a whole lot when you get shot at by 122mm incendiary rockets, or just rockets really overall, so... Yeah. 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 I mean, it's like the, the high explosive splash damage is pretty hard to dodge. I mean, just being near a high explosive shock rave is not good for one's health. Yeah, I, I can certainly see that. Um, I will say I do love the Luftwaffe Jaeger Panzerfaust squads because I do have, actually have the MP28 on there. I'm just I'm watching this one, SU-76, that's right there. Oh, yeah. I'm watching him, too. But he's technically not close enough to get the shot off. He's throwing grenades, though. So he's in the trenches taking grenades from John. I don't know. They'll uh, land run into the crew compartment eventually. It's like playing basketball, but a bit more deadly. Yeah, and the, the weird thing is, no one's going in to clear him out. Yeah, I don't think... Can the SU-76 not see him? I don't think he can. No, he can't. That's... He's 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 lofting grenades over the top of... Wow, that's... that's... But that's like... Wow, that's... Huh. I think uh, Luftwaffe Jaegers or the SU-76 just doesn't have that good optics. But it must, it's like open top. Anyway... I mean, that Luftwaffe Jäger shouldn't worry about it too soon with all the Soviet infantry coming towards him and going for one desperate hurrah charge into a sniper squad. Which is weird. You wouldn't expect the sniper squad to be able to be that talented, but here they are. Um, I do like this mark down here, here to the south. He knows that there's a, there's a, a Pac-40 there. He's been taking shots from it. You can see as it is some little fading fires over here just to the south of that forest. But as things continue to kind of heat up, it's 13-11, you know, Graham's up on, on Ort right now, and we've seen this happen before. When Ort gets, you know, behind, one of two things happened. Either it's a very, very quick collapse, or he gets the bit back in his teeth, and it gets really nasty and really fun to watch. So I'm really hoping for the latter one here. Yeah, he's starting to build up a pretty nasty little Sug Armored Force in this northern town position here. Which actually should compete pretty well against his like T-34 and SU-76. IS-2 is going to be a bit of an issue, but I'm sure, yeah, he has an Ash one here to deal with that. So he does have the capabilities as well as the neighbor Arthur. A lot of, like, a lot of neighbor Arthur artillery strikes in this match. I mean, both sides are actually using rocket artillery quite extensively. Yeah, and that's a piece that's wondering if they really truly know what they're shooting at, or if it's just kind of more like, we know the enemy is there, okay, level the town. Oh, the commandant rent down. Yes, he did. There we go. That was a really good kill, and the last one is going to be driving through some flames. Is going to survive you, so that's and also another important unit you don't want to lose, but that commander going down is pretty huge. As it's just it's... the influence on the front line is massive. It's big, but let's remember that 6th Luftwaffe gets 2 to their card. And I think 2 is a pretty standard thing at this point for most of these divisions. They, they pick up 2 high command officers. Yeah, so, usually, yes. if, mm -hmm. usually if infantry divisions, I notice, they get 2 commanders in A phase, while like tank divisions may only get like 1 commander card in A phase. Yes, but then, then yeah. also, they usually get another like, kind of tank version of it as well, which actually I, I really do love seeing a little tiny twist to it. Yeah. Um, down to the south, I would say that this this push is pretty much deceased. Not completely dead, mind you, but it's it's you know it's certainly on the table, and I, I think they're gonna call it pretty soon. Yeah, I just, I mean, it's a nice position to try and get a hold of, but Graham is pretty well dug in there. But the main thing is that even if Fort got pushed back, eh, it doesn't matter. He's still holding out that crossroad flag, yeah, which is still a pretty good advantage to have. You're so, right. 
he can just defend, and six loof draw is good at defending. You're right. I mean, and, and that's kind of what he needs to do. Or it might be dug in, but Graham is stug in. Oh no, I had that backwards <laughs> completely. But you know what I meant. <laughs> um, uh, that's gonna go on one of those blooper reels, I'm sure. I'm sure somebody out there's been clipping stuff throughout all of these posts, and uh, and you know the day that that happens, I want to hear from you. Um, I but the rocket artillery, I feel like you know we wax philosophic about all how much we love rocket artillery. This is why it is. You stun up entire pushes. You need to put up a curtain of fire so that you're going to go and engage where you want to and how you want to. And I think a lot of people don't really take advantage of that. Yeah. Yeah, rocket artillery is pretty powerful and as smart as you can see. You can get run lucky here and blow up a tank or a high import or a high value unit. The run downside to using rocket artillery, especially Katusas and whatnot, is that they do use up a lot of supply. So you do need to make sure you have enough supply trucks and... As we saw with Orstack, yes, he has two cards of supply trucks, so he should be fine to just keep Nabal in throughout this entire match. He can afford logistics. He certainly can team to. Um, there is one T-34 down to the south. Oof, he just brewed up. There is nothing else down here to the south to kind of fight this off. Yes, there's some infantry. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying that they're completely worthless. But it is kind of a tough sell. Oh, wait a second. I didn't even see this Kadusha battery back here. And one of the supply trucks goes Whoa. up too. That was a big kill. That's not bad at all. And Yank gonna be retaliating a bit with some bombs. Mezzer Smith's coming in, but the anti air should it's, be enough to. It's really far away. I just sent the Mezzer Smith just a smidge too slow. Yeah. Not the fastest interceptor. But yeah, push down south or is going pretty well for the Stugs leading the charge, providing very good fire support. Yeah, but. Graham is dug in pretty deep in that forest. Certainly is. That's like you said, Strathniki don't need to be the most resilient of troops, but they just have to kind of throw their bodies at the enemy until, you know, they run out of ammunition. Yeah. Yeah. They're, they're nice and beefy. And having lots of guys and scrotch is uh, always been a very valuable thing in Steel Division, especially with um, the Hungarian with their big, like, 14, 15-man scrotch. They roll. They just won't die, man. They just won't die. That's true. But the thing is that once you lose them, you have to watch out about the long-term effects on the actual Hungarian population because every single Hungarian male is in those divisions. <laughs> oh, yeah, no. Yeah, I'm lot of infantry scrotch. Oh, no. It's over. Sharnos are coming in. Oh, no. Oh, God. And we're seeing a really cheeky push with this. Oh, there we go. Pioneer's being thrown on into the fray. I think he was trying to get a surrender or two. I don't think he knew the superior was there. Um, but that superior is, is no longer there. Mm -hmm. So. That was surprisingly nice. IS-2 continues to bedevil the entire approach. I'm trying to figure out. There is a Nashorn behind. A couple of Nashorns. In fact, I think there's ever, the entire Nashorn complement for the 6th is on the field, I think. It. Oh, he's got more on sea face. Oh, you're right, you're but right. But right now, he pretty much feels like he has most of them out. He has two in B phase as well. He's actually very heavy on on Nashorn. He only has, like, two anti-tank, like, guns. Everything else is self-propelled guns. And, I mean, I, Nashorns I find really hard to use. And especially against IS-2s, as we said before, he has the same range. You have paper-thin armor. And you're not that stealthy. No, but you know what is going to be worthwhile if you can't be stealthy is you bring in an ME410 who will go and drop rounds down on top of an IS-2 and a, uh, you know, supply truck back there. So IS-2 down to the south goes down. And once again, those guys aren't cheap. I'm not saying no, there's a ton of, of, of those ME410s in the, in the entire deck. Indeed, I only see really a total of five. We've seen one go down already. But, um... If you can get even remotely that good, oof. It's gonna be murder. Yeah. Main thing is, Graham does have. He has, like, a lot of IS2s in his deck, like, taking a look of it. So he can afford to lose IS2s left and right, really, and still be pretty fine. Of course, in terms of the budget, that's not gonna be great. But also, in terms of the budget, I mean, looking at the income, we're almost into C phase, give it another six minutes or so. And both sides really go pretty low in terms of point share. So I think things will definitely slow down once we reach out parts of the map match. 
Seems certainly likely. I think right now we're going to start to see an artillery push to start taking out anti-air positions again. We do have an off map for coming down. It's going to slam into that southern um, attack and pretty much murder it. And you can see right now we sit exactly 12-12 again. After 25 minutes, we are right back where we started. Yeah, it's been pretty back and forth. Nothing, nothing too crazy in terms of aggressive pushes. I mean... The front line hasn't really changed all that much, but both sides are playing pretty slow defensive divisions. I mean, they're really just trading more rocket strikes and ground at this point. Now, the regrettable thing is that some of these rocket strikes, I think, are being sent off with, I'm not going to say nary a care, but rather they are being placed very, I want to say almost conservatively, you know? Like yeah. We're looking for the back lines, we're trying to take out the enemy assets in the back, we're not trying to hammer the front lines, which I, I always feel like is exactly what you need to do. Of course, when they land as they do, um, doesn't take out a supply truck this time, doesn't even take out the Kathusha, but does pretty well and start freaking them out quite a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those rocket strikes can be pretty RNG dependent and their effect, and sometimes they kill everything, sometimes they miss everything. And usually nothing in between. Well, it really depends on, on how pious you are. You know, if you pray to R and Jesus and, you know, he cometh down, that's, that's I believe, the, the third commandment is, I am <laughs> the Jesus, the, the R and Jesus, thy Lord. You must pray to me before you do any artillery strikes. Unfortunately, I don't think a lot of them have really been so efficient here. Indeed. But yeah, things are definitely starting to bog down a little bit. I mean, Ort has his, like, stuck platoon up north in... In the defense, Graham has set up his defense there as well. And looking down south, I mean, both sides are just kind of <laughs> deploying in defenses. We're digging in into like a World War One situation. Complete with the fact that we're taking barely trained reservists and sticking them on the front lines. Look at that town and see how many Chernos are there. One, two, that three, is... six, seven of them. And of course, they have yeah. to max them just in case they want to take one step back. So, you know, <laughs> going quite historic here. Um, yeah. And, of course, the Germans are, are saying welcome to the front lines in the only way they know how. Iron cigars. Now, this will freak them out a little bit. Yeah, but it won't really do much because he has nothing to follow up or push, which is usually the thing with rocket artillery. Is that once you get, like, a strike like this, now would be the perfect time to push with a horde of infantry. But all only has one pioneer, and that's not going to be enough to make an effective push, even against Chernos. Nope, I don't think so at all. So down south, we're seeing a group of Luftdorf Jaegers moving up to the front line, deploying pretty close here, and they're going to be caught out in the open. Probably take some heavy casualties. You know, but I feel that's kind of the MO. Like, you need to go and, and unmask. He's positioned with the SU-76 just now. I think he just took a round. Is that from the Pac-40? Yeah, I think it was from the Pac-40. Yep. It's got, yeah, Pac-40's got a pretty decent line of sight, I believe. But there is an ISU-122 coming on in. So again, you know, and an IS-2. Geez, so they're going yep. really hardcore. And the Katyusha is looking to take out that forest as well. So it's, it's kind of amusing to me that we're seeing these kind of, you know, seemingly tiny trades back and forth like to the north Nashorn takes out another is2 um and you know and it's happening in drips and drabs like a death of a thousand cuts on both divisions yeah it's just slow and steady just trades between both sides here i actually think Khan. i think it'd be safe if we take us to a times two sure you want to do that at uh 29 minutes yep all right and here comes that times two for you folks. And, there we and go. go. There you go. Because, yeah, things, I mean, this is to be expected. This isn't, like, disrespect both players, but he's speeding through the replay. They're playing very defensively. That's what the divisions do. So we might as well watch the uh, rocket strikes in the high speed. And I just saw one Katusa strike knock out an Ash one there. So yep. that's pretty damn good. And if Graham can keep knocking out those Nash ones, his ISUs are going to have no threat. Unfortunately, you're seeing a return that they both are going to engage either nothing or a single out of supply Katyusha. Yeah. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like a game of battleships. It, as both sides really are just is. trying to sink each other's battleships, and by battleships, I mean Katyushas and neighbor Earthers. There's a lot of Katyushas and neighbor Earthers, Khan. I haven't seen this many in 
Even in vanilla in ages. I sent a sense you play Call of Duty World at War. Exactly. Uh, no men of rule. That's actually probably even more true than what I was thinking. Um, more Katushas coming into the south. I mean, not too surprising there. Actually, I think we're going to start to see a push here in the south. Five guard squads, and they're being dropped off out on the open roads. Like, this is not the, the wisest of advanced paths, but none, nonetheless, it certainly is something that could be potentially quite dangerous. Four guard squads coming down the road. Three guard squads <laughs> going down the road. <laughs> okay, it's going to be free. Uh, the MG-34s and the pack are in a lovely position to just... Catch them all out in the open and do some lovely long-range fire here. Yeah, but between the, I mean, the, I was at the, S, the, the ISU 122, that's the terrifying one. And then she's Yak 1B coming in as well. Might, he's going to die, but he's going to die as he lived, killing Fascista. Yeah. And knocking out, out Pack. Yeah, and that was what I was going to say. Ooh, and National Run goes down as well. Go, those are endangered. You can't shoot those. Yeah, um, they're right in the 40s, you know. <laughs> you could kind of get rid of it. That's uh, true, unfortunately. Um, yeah. Can I see some tube artillery? No, it's it's just the... There's 242 lofting iron scars way downtown. Mm-hmm. That's the uh, artillery version. It's just very strange to see it, because you're kind of so used to seeing otherwise. Um, yeah. So, guard push, not dead, not alive. And I'm interested to see what this 122 barrage does. Uh, that, that, that was pretty good. Is there more? There must be more. There is, but there's a weird reload time on it. Yep, there you go. Yeah. That one low and MG-34 gunner braving through the artillery strikes to save our piece of equipment. You know, the head cannon for me is that he actually left the MG behind. He's just running from there. Theoretically, <laughs> theoretically he's getting another piece of equipment. Uh, yeah. Not to be outdone, BF 109s are kind of screening for this ME 110, uh, 410, excuse me. Looking for the ISU, and he doesn't get a shot his bombs off. No. But here we go. I mean, we're finally seeing some development here. Graham capturing that crossroads flag finally. But he's still a bit of defense he has to get through. There's a Pack 4 tier, there's Nash Horns, there's Stugs, there's Infantry, another Nash Horn, more Stugs. I think he's going to be able to hold on to his crossroads, but I don't think he's going to get anywhere deeper into enemy line. You know, I don't think he is either, but we'll see. We are going to see a BF-109. More and more Soviet aircraft are being taken out. We are going to see this attempt to kill that pack. Oh, the Commandant's Commander, down. Yeah. you need to run away, man. That's. I know you like to lead by the front and all of that, Rommel style, but that's a bit suicidal in this case, especially when the Soviets have flamed for us. I'm pretty sure it's pretty suicidal even if the Soviets didn't have flamethrowers, but I, I admire your gumption on that. Yes. Oh, Luftwaffe Jaeger's coming in to try and screen their retreat for Lu the Luftwaffe Commandant. And cuts these guards off guard. Which is also kind of perverse when you think about it, too. These guys should not be able to be taken on the wing by some, you know, ragtag group of, you know, foot eagles over here. And aircraft mechanics. Yeah, yeah, which is very, very strange. Uh, these 410s not always getting the most viable important kills, but the fact that they are still getting kills is quite important to us. Yeah, and they keep getting shot down, Rich. I'm thinking Ort is probably running pretty low on them now. I think that's probably true. We are going to see another um, round of Katyushas. And I think... One, two, three... I think that's the last one of Studebaker's over here for the Russians. Yeah. He's gotten four. Yeah, he's got no more. Oh, yeah. All that's left of his rocket artillery is whatever he gets to shoot right now. Pat's really going to screw him over. Like, he really needs, like, another card to play because Ort is just going to continue naval ref striking. And there we go. IS-2 went down there, down south. And that was really the heavy, you know, duty firepower. All he has is Cherno and guards. And they can't do anything against Stugs. Except get Chernoed up. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this is really coming down to attrition, but not so much manpower, but logis log logistics. Which yes, is something you don't see all that often. No, I mean, you don't, do you? I mean, Sturmovic coming in to the south drops some, you know, unwelcome artillery. I'm, I'm finding this next kind of mini naval weapon barrage. Apparently he thought going off half-cocked was better than actually firing off the entirety of it. So, rounds are out. Only three of them, but he's aiming for that town. And I'm wondering if we're going to see an attempted rush here? No, no rush. Yeah. No rush. Many rush in, no rush. 
<laughs> yeah, it's a, it's a slow and steady push throughout town, yeah. I mean, the artillery is helping out a bit. But, yeah, yes, he might be able to capture that northern town. There's only one IS-2, and he can only shoot so much. But we are seeing a counter-attack down south here from Ort, Green and Maul of Jofiego. I think both sides are going to have plenty of infantry to continue the fight here, so it should be pretty even Stevens in that regard, but... What I mean, is... it's just going to be its one IS-2 to defend. And one last barrage, I think, from that particular Kathusha. I don't think there's any more. Yeah, and that one went down, you know, so that was a really rough raw barrage. Especially with the IS-2 right on the front lines as we speak? Oh, yes. Yeah. But back to a 12-12 here, and I mean, and as we cross the 42-minute mark, these guys are showing no signs of stopping. Like I said, whenever they seem to kind of meet up, there's one or two ways that it goes. It's it's either a complete total blowout, or we have, you know, a game of the century, at least in terms of time, if nothing else. I think this is one of those games that definitely starts out like a slow burn. Like, this is... This is one of those things that's really drawn out. There's been a lot of, of artillery foreplay, now we're getting to the meat of the action. Like, this is... It's very... It's like Different. World War One. Like at start, it was you know very aggressive. Everyone was moving and mobilizing their forces. But now we're in like 1917, 1918 years. Everyone's running out of supply. People are dying. All the heavy equipment is gone, and it's just kind of slow slog until one side eventually collapses. But Ort has the logistics. I mean, yeah, Ort has the logistics. So to speak, he's getting those American shipments coming through, even though he's playing Germany, which is a bit weird. I think, like, that's going to help out a bunch, because we're seeing constant rocket barrages from him still. And his Nash runs, while they don't have the right amount of armor, they're still able to get some very, very vital snipes here and there. Just looking at IS-2 numbers overall, two, five, seven, nine of them. I don't know, I think we've seen probably the majority of them. Not all of them, but the majority of them go down. Yeah. Yeah, he still has a few ISU still, to be fair. Oh, actually, maybe not. He's got I think three, he's, I think. He's, he's got four in total deck, so... Or actually, no, 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 he's got five in total on the deck. I was uh, miscounting, yeah. No, no, I, was adding, I was adding in the, the Comparatis. He's got nine. He's got nine. Yeah. Oh, but okay. um, looking overall, I mean, just like the fact that we continue to see these constant strikes... And I feel like if he's able to go, he, being Ort here, is able to go and get even a momentary kind of foothold in this eastern, northern part of this town, or this northern part of the town, the eastern side of it, that could be devastating overall. Unfortunately for oh, him, yeah. I think he's really fixating on trying to take out the support teams and not really aiming for this town. If he aims for this town, there's what, 100 points of material in there pretty easily? Yeah, well, the Chanos. Oh, the Chernos, I mean, we have a combat officer in there. We even have the off map. I mean, it, it could have been brilliant, but I don't think we're going to be seeing a barrage there anytime soon. Yeah. I do like how Graham is uh, flanking with his one guard flamethrower team up north. I think he's going to try and get that Luftwaffe zero off the flag, and by getting them off the flag, he's probably going to convince him of the flamethrower. True. Which is a very convincing tool. Uh, I cannot but agree with you there. I can't say if I'm on the receiving end of them, but at the same time, Ort has managed to get himself a 1311. Yeah, and nice thing is, is that unlike in Vanilla, we're coming into the sudden death timer, so even though it's only a plus one tick for Ort, it's going to go down pretty quickly. And once we get to the 55 minute mark, if we do, it will go down even quicker. Yeah, and, and I like that. I think there's a necessary change. Ooh. Yeah. So, uh, another ORT attempt is going to be made here to the south. You can see right now we're seeing six squads of infantry being brought on in. Naval for strike going after that forest. Um, ooh, these are all the Panzerfaust Luftwaffe Jaegers as well. So, some honest to God true infantry. Yeah, he's going to need an anti tank. <laughs> he's really going to need it. If Well, the hard thing is trying to get close enough to the IS 2, but. Even then, it's just green off any T-34s or SU-76s in the forest. Well, we're going to see another barrage over here now, at long last, looking to find all the Chernos. And regrettably, though, this doesn't go with any push, which is, again, the part that's killing me a little bit on the inside, but just a little bit. I mean, I want to be able to survive here to kind of continue to, to preach the good word of these replays to everybody out there. Yeah. Yeah, we're reaching the 50-minute mark now, and... 
Water's only running by that slow plus run, but he has pretty good momentum down south, holding on to the crossroads flag, as well as a run right in the center of the field, yeah, as he has a low draw fear, which gives you better frontline coverage. Of course, while Graham, I mean, he has the Cherno spam coming into the northern town here and, you know, trying to push the lift off here off the flag of the guards, but it ain't going to work. You know, when you sigh, it kind of says a whole lot. You're like, yeah, there's sure yeah. no spam here. I'm like, yeah, that, that pretty much says it all, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, well, actually, the sure no spam's working. I, I shouldn't have shied too much. He's actually very close to getting out flag, but there's a bunch of stugs Yoda. still back here. Like, the reserve stugs have been there the entire time. They haven't really been fighting that much. It's just, yeah, when they're needed. You know what What has been fighting a fair bit is those, the, again, the ME410 came down south, took out four spots of infantry at the last bombing run. Damn. And oh, man. broke the back of the, at least the first line. There's only the, you know, rush in here of Sharnos that stopped it from becoming a complete route. And the IS-3 yeah. thing's going to claim this Nash Horn, yep. Yeah. Yeah, it's really dangerous to use the Nash Horns in close quarters engagements like that. He does have a pack 43 in the forest, so if he can actually maneuver that into a shooting position, you know, which is Red Storm, it takes forever to move anti-tank guns, he will be in a pretty good position to just shut down any armor. If. If, yeah. It's probably going to take like five minutes for it to reach the edge of the forest because it moves a rop in. Oh, you don't see speed for, uh, for like, foot sloggers, I forgot. No, they, they measure um, speed for foot sloggers in deployments, I think. <laughs> So the first time you go over to the front, I mean, at that point, you know, like it's a couple hundred meters, maybe. Um, yeah. But the Sharners are falling back down here in the south, and that's probably a good plan. Unfortunately, nobody told the SU-76. So, also not sure why he's not being rushed right now by these Luftwaffe Jaegers, but what do I know? The shotgun that can, or could. But yeah, it's really just coming down to... I mean, Ort is still being able to continue his rocket branches while Graham can't. He has a bunch of very expensive tutors, which can't do anything right now. He's making up for it in bombing strikes, but it's not... Well, actually, he is running right now, so it is making some progress. He doesn't have a whole lot of airplanes, and I feel like he's going to run out soon. Except for the IL-2s, not... which take forever and a day to die. Yeah. They just refuse to die. But they just forget to die sometimes, you know. But oh, up north! I mean, up north, the far northern town, we've barely talked about it at all. It's pretty much been in Graham's control this entire time, but Ort is going for a sneaky flank here with two <laughs> Luftdrop Führers. I guess they can lead each other in trying to take his position. Well, I guess between two butter bars, you should be able to find something good about it. Yeah. And even though they're not the best equipped, I mean, they're going to be able to outgun the Superior at long range. And even moving the Luftwaffe Fusiliers to screen ahead in the forest, and that's going to be a pretty easy flag for Ort to hold. That might just really be it, because it's only three minutes left if it, you know, continues. But the funny thing is, right now he actually needs to get just a smidge more of infantry in there, because technically, there we go. Okay, yeah. that one guard squad going down really helped out a lot. But yeah, I mean, the funny thing about this. So you have an even game the entire time, and to get to this kind of sudden death timers, you can kind of get away with not really being too aggressive, and then you get to these these things right here, and this is this is the make or break moment. Yeah, this is. It's always been like the huge argument about time limit in the game, but frankly, you don't you don't need a time limit if you have this uh, feature in the vanilla game, because you can still play like your long sea phase divisions, but you don't have to play like thirty minutes extra after you're running to like slowly beat out the opponent it actually you can actually play long style in in red storm and do pretty well because once you get to like this far into the match and if you have your attrition if you haven't ran out due to attrition and you have the better income you can win pretty easily you just have to survive well and, and that's the kind of fun thing about this is that you're almost being rewarded for surviving yeah you can play like defensive for like a lot of the match, set up your iron rule and break the enemy as they try to break onto you. And then when they run out of stuff, you push through, capture the few flags and win in five minutes. Uh, shotgun of, of striking is going out yeah. here. I think this is just to kind of keep 
yeah, yeah, this is just a, an FU at this point. Because the southern side's been lost, so he's trying to just take a couple more flags here, just as insurance, as we go down to the last 28 yeah. seconds. Yeah, but I think capturing that northern flag pretty much sealed the deal there for all. That was such a good position to hold on to, and Graham has really bad logistics or re really bad uh, movement getting up here in terms of uh, like roads, from I'm trying to say. That's totally fine, and as you expect, with an hour-long game, we have hour-long game KD, so we have cheese. Holy still, moly. Still only an 800 count difference. Yeah, that's not that bad, all, all things considering. I believe this is probably one of the longest games we've ever casted. Not where we went through two times speed for half of it, to be fair, but still, that was, that was a long match. You know who's making me drool, though? Take a look at the kills. Oh, Mr. Pavlov. I mean, oh, he doesn't yeah. need a house. He just needs an IS2. That's true. I wasn't even thinking Pavlov's house. I was thinking Pavlov the dog thing. But that's fair, too. That's absolutely fair. <laughs> uh, but yeah, geez, I mean, to kill. The IS2s, these, these were the rocks upon which the 6th broke for so long. Holy moly, yeah. Every single time wow. we get to an IS2, we're, we're seeing, you know, 150 points worth of kills. On the other side, though, Mivis, we have there's a few kills right there. Fleisch, you know, definitely getting his pound of flesh there. Well done. Um, Bach, well, he, I think he's dead, but I'm sure at one point he'll be Bach. Ketting did very well himself. Tisha, this ME410s, I mean, there, there was a lot of very, very strange kind of like demi-impressive performances. Not, not to Pavlov's level, of course. No. But uh, very like, impressive nonetheless. Mm -hmm. No, do more like like three IS two kills, which is pretty damn good. You don't oh, yeah, get like right. one third of the IS twos. Colt got got four kills. He was almost an instant ace today. Wow. So uh, just again, one of those things where you see exactly what you might have expected. The Soviets are extremely strong around their vehicles, but when you start working outside those vehicles, maybe not seeing the same kind of value that they might have hoped. Yeah, those IS-2s were just, I mean, great fire support against the horde of Luftwaffe Jaegers, and they're very good when you don't have to fight Panthers or... Well, they're good against Panthers and Tigers, but it's better when they're not around. Indeed. 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 But yeah, that will be a game run victory to Ort, and uh, the next cast will be covering game two. So if Ort does win the next run, he will be going on to the true finals and graham i mean he's he's only got one chance one opportunity will he take it or will he let it slip well i guess we'll find out next time i guess until yeah. that time i'm con Ulrich. i'm rangru take it easy